Hi everyone, in today's video we'll cover a t-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, its definitions, goals, mathematical properties, and its limitations. t-stochastic nearest neighbor, or t-SNE as it's called, is a popular dimensionality reduction technique, which preserves local structures. So if you recall from the PCA video, which stands for Principal Component Analysis, the PCA focuses on global structure while maximizing variance and thus dimensionality reduction. However, TSNE preserves the local structure and thus dimensionality reduction. Okay. Now, what TSNE also does is it maintains the nearest neighbors in the local dimensional map. So this is a very important thing to understand. So let's assume we have a high dimensional representation like this. So in our context, we are doing a two dimensional representation where we have five data points, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. And we are having nearest neighbors. So x1 and x2 are close to each other compared to x1 and x3. x4 and x5 are close to each other compared to an x4 and x3. So this particular local neighborhood structure is an important thing from a TSNE point of view. Okay, what it does as part of its modeling is that it converts these pairwise distances. So x1 to x2 is 1, and x1 to x3, x1 to x4, x1 to x5, all these pairwise distances are being captured, and it converts them into probability density function. Okay, and that probability density function lets us do a modeling where we are then going to be asking a question, what is the probability that a point x2 is a neighbor of x1? Or what is the probability that point x4 is a neighbor of x1? Okay, So that's the key difference of how it is modeling compared to other dimensionality reduction techniques. Now that we have seen high dimensional representation, let's now come back here to this statement. Focus on maintaining the nearest neighbors in lower dimensional map. What that means in further detail is that when we have converted the higher dimensional representation and reduced the dimensionality to a lower dimensional representation, so in our case we are going from a two dimensional representation into a single dimensional representation, what we want TSNE to do, or at least what is TSNE doing, is that it is trying to keep the data points that were of closer in the higher dimensional, that were close in higher dimensional, also close in the lower dimensional representation. Okay. So just like here, x1, x2 is closer. The same way when it's represented in the lower dimension uh, representation, x1 and x2 are close to each other. Similarly, x3 is far off x1, and x3 is far off in x1 in both dimensions. So this is one of the goals that it has, and one of the properties with which this particular probability density function is being used. Okay. So next, let's step forward and take a look at what the actual mathematical definitions of the goals are. Very subtly put, it is going to find a lower dimensional representation from a higher dimensional representation that makes PI a match QI. So these are two terminologies. Now we will explore in detail what PI is and what QI is. And then we will again come back to figure out how that optimization is going to work. So first now let's look at PI. The PI is fundamentally standing for representing the probability of point J is a neighbor of point I. So P J conditional I is representing the probability that a point X J is a neighbor of point X I. Okay, so let's see how it does it. So first the numerator, what you see, this particular term X I minus X J, the whole square is the Euclidean distance. Okay, and Dividing by 2 sigma square, fundamentally the sigma here is the uh, complexity parameter that is called as the perplexity. Okay, So we, in a minute we'll look into the details of what perplexities are and how they are actually calibrated. But for now, consider that to be a normalizing term. What we have done on the numerator is we have taken an exponential of it 
of this distance, adjusted distance, and we have divided it by the sum of all pairwise distance from xi point. So what that means is, to coming back to here on the high dimension representation, we have first taken the numerator is x1 minus x2. Let's say that's the probability we're trying to calculate. Then we're going to have x1 minus x2, the whole square divided by the perplexity, divided by the sum of all distance, pairwise distances from x1. So x1 to x2 plus x2 to x3 plus x1 to x4 plus x1 to x5. That's what is divided here. And that gives us the probability for x1 to x2. Okay. That is, to rephrase it, probability that x2 is a neighbor of point x1. Okay. Probability of j conditional i. Now, that is the high dimension representation. We have a very similar notion also on the lower dimension representation. And now let's look at that. That is the Q of Ji. Okay. So here, what we are bringing in is a newer term, Yi. So what you guys have to understand is Yi is a projection of Xi in the lower dimensional space. Yj is a projection of Xj in the lower dimensional space. Okay. So this particular yi minus yj, again, the distance, we are calculating a Euclidean distance here, and we are dividing by the sum of all Euclidean distances. And this formulation of calculating the probability representation in the lower dimensional space is depending on the normal distribution assumptions made in the SNE paper. Okay. Now, SNE paper came out in 2002. However, in 2008, the t SNE paper, which depends not on normal distribution, but on the T distribution, was further published. And the T distribution's function of Q, which is very similar in the conceptually, but slightly different in the terminologies and notations, is that it is using 1 plus the Euclidean distance, the whole square of the inverse, divided by the sum of 1 plus the Euclidean distance, pairwise Euclidean distances, the inverse. So this is the t SNE version of the Q function, which is representing the probabilities in the lower dimensional space. Okay. So now that we understood what the high dimensional representation of probability is and what the lower dimensional representation of probability is, let's now try and see what it means as finding a lower dimensional representation that where PI is matching QI. Okay, so let's look at that particular algorithm. So that algorithm is given here as C equal to the KL of PI conditional QI. What this stands for is the KL divergence. So KL divergence is a standard way for us to calculate distances between two distributions. So here we have two distributions, probability distributions, density functions, for which we are now trying to find the KL divergence which actually conveniently falls into this notation or at this formulation, where I want to first look at the right side, which is the error term. What we have done is we have taken a log of pji by qji. So for each of the element i and j, we have first taken a log of the pij, pji by qji. That's the first thing we have done. And we weighted it by the probability in the higher dimensional space. So to repeat, what we have done here is we have taken a log of what the high dimensional probability is divided by the lower dimensional probability. And we have weighted it by the higher dimensional probability. Okay. Finally, after summing all that up, we are getting a value for this particular KL divergence value, which is what we want to try and minimize. Okay. Now, one important thing to note is that this error function is going to provide a high penalty for data points where in the higher dimensional space, which are, which are very close to each other, but are being projected as far away in the lower dimensional space. Okay. However, the penalty is low when the points are far away in the higher dimensional space, but is being projected back into the lower dimensional space as being closer to each other.
So that is one of the asymmetric nature of penalty that is applied onto these error terms because of the way we have defined the log of the high dimensional probability by the lower dimensional probability and that we have given a weight by the higher dimensional probability. Okay, so this nature of this function gives us that asymmetric penalty as part of its uh, output. Now, now that we understand that, let's now talk about one of the terms which we didn't explain much earlier, which is the perplexity. So perplexity is referring to the effective number of neighbors we are actually calibrating into training data set. Okay, so this is not a scalar value. This is a vector value, and it is a global parameter we are passing in based on our training data set. The optimal choice for this is that we want to have a small value for dense regions. So if the data is densely, if there is a dense region, then we want to have a small value for the effective number of neighbors. But if the data is very sparsely distributed, then we want to have a large value for this particular parameter, which is the perplexity. And in practice, what we do is we do a search on a binary tree along the x i to find the optimal perplexity. So this is something that we will do typically, or the algorithm is internally doing if you're running an implemented algorithm. Next, the important thing to understand is the larger the value of perplexity, the entropy which is a measure of impurity, increases for the overall probability distribution. Okay. So the overall probability distributions, data distribution, which is in, can also be represented as a variance, for example, the, the variance of the data is increasing with the larger the values of this perplexity value. That's what it, it simply says. Now that we understood these, I want us to also understand what are the limitations with TSNI. One of the limitations with TSNI is when the data is on a highly varying manifold, it starts to fail. So what this means is, so let's take a simple example where we have a simple manifold, like a curve. And for a curve, we can actually represent them through elementary functions. However, if we have multiple sets of curves coming in that are starting to vary a lot with our training data, then such a difference in the variation impacts the local representations or the ability for TSNI to preserve local representation, and thus it starts to have certain failures. The second important thing where there is a limitation with TSNI is the assumption about local linearity. The local linearity assumption is coming because of the way distance is being calculated, which is the Euclidean distance. So if you see here, there's an Euclidean distance calculated on both the higher dimensional and also on the lower dimensional space. And this gets violated if the data is highly intrinsic dimensional, okay? The mathematical terminology highly intrinsic dimensional means the data itself is highly complex, okay? So there is a set of theory, mathematical theory, which talk about local intrinsic dimensionality and stuff. But to simplify and make you understand what does mean, it means as highly intrinsic dimensional, just understand that a data can be represented into a lower dimensional only when its intrinsic dimensional is, is low, okay? So complex data which have high intrinsic dimensionality will not be feasible to represent them into a lower dimensional space effectively, and TSNI will fail in such cases, okay? All right, so that's all I have today on TSNI, and the related videos on this are the principal component analysis, and then one more video which compares principal com component analysis with TSNI. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like, and let's talk to you guys in the next video. All right, thank you, bye.